No rest for Rovers as we're back on the road for some midweek action up against Derby County at Pride Park. We'll talk about that match and much more on today's show. That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview. This time looking forward to Blackburn Rovers midweek clash up against Derby County at their gaff. Now, we'll get to that in just one second. Now, if you are new to the channel, where the heck have you been? Smash the old subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, world football related. We've got it all here under one roof. And also, before we get into the thick of things of this match, if you are one of, one of the resource for anything Rovers related, why don't you check out the old roverschat.com website. Uh, link to that puppy in my description below. And also, the brscs.com forum where you can chat to fellow Rovers fans just like this guy. Anyway, let's crack on as we can't waste any more time. The game is just around the corners on Tuesday night. But anyway, let's take a little, little bit of uh, a look at it. Uh, so Rovers will take on Derby County at Pride Park on the 18th of September. It is an evening kickoff. I think it's around about 2, uh, 7.45. 2.45 if you are in the east east side of the USA, which I don't know who who could be there. Well, it's me. Uh, I'm there, so that's why I know that time off the top of my head. Now, Derby County currently managed by Frank Lampard, who is in his first managerial spell. Uh, with any old club, um, and last season Derby County finished in sixth spot into the old playoffs, but they didn't, uh, they couldn't progress too far in the old playoffs as they were knocked out at the the first round. Uh, their key man for me is Mason Mount, the old Loney, I think like that, one of the old Premier League big boys. Anyway, uh, and the last time that these two sides met at Pride Park, it was a Rovers victory, and it was on the 24th of September 2016. Uh, and the two sides have met 131 times in all competitions. Uh, Rovers winning 55 of them. Uh, we've drawn 35. And Derby County picking up 44, 41 wins for themselves. Anyway, let's take a look at how I think the hosts will line up. Uh, we've got Scott Carson in goal. Forsyth, Keo, Wisdom and Tamori. The back four with Huddleston and Johnson in a very decent defensive midfield spot. They have the main man at the moment, Mason Mount. Uh, they've got Joseph Oon, uh, and I've gone for Marriott because Tom Lawrence is suspended and is it Matt Waghorn or whatever, Martin Waghorn, whatever his name is, uh, leading the line up front for Derby County. Uh, so if you have a quick glance at that, you do know Huddleston also has got some English caps to his name, Wisdom, formerly of Liverpool, Scott Carson also formerly England captain, and Mason Mount is tipped to go all the way and eventually make an appearance for England. Um, he, is, he is a youngster. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at the statistics for um, Derby County so far this season, Mount has already got four goals to his name. Lawrence has got three, so he's going to be a big miss. Uh, Waghorn's also got two goals, and Josephson has got two goals to his name. Let's talk about the yellow cards thus far. Uh, Johnson's got three yellow cards. Key's got three. Ledley, Joe Ledley's got two, and Bryson has two. And, of course, that red card that I've already talked about, Tom Lawrence has got one, uh, and he is suspended for the game. And also... Frank Lampard got a red card on that last game against Rotherham, which we'll talk about in a second. So I think perhaps uh, he will not be on the touchline. Anyway, so look at the last five matches for Derby County as we get closer to kickoff. Uh, last time out, they did take on Rotherham, who got promoted last season with us. Uh, and they lost 1-0 uh, on the road. Before that, they took on Hull City on the 1st of September. They won 2-1 away from home. Before that, they also took on Hull City again in the Cup. And again, they won 4-0 this time. That was on 28th of August. What does that day mean? Is it a special one? Of course it's a special one. It's my birthday. Before that, they took on Derby, uh, they took on Preston North End, 25th of August. And again, Derby County won. And all the way back, Tuesday, 21st of August, uh, Derby County took on Ipswich Town. Again at Pride Park. And again, they won 2-0. So quite formidable at home. Home, um, but can we get them on and off day? Now let's take a look at the next five fixtures for uh, Derby County. Obviously, we're talking about the first one right here, right now. They take on the Rovers uh, Tuesday, to 18th of September, just in case you don't know. And it is available on Sky on the red button if you have that ability. Um, uh, meanwhile, kicking on forward, they take on Brentford on the weekend, Saturday, the 22nd of October, uh, September. Kicking on forward, they have a tasty League Cup clash against Manchester United on 25th of September. Again, available on the Sky cameras. Uh, 29th of September, they take on Bolton Wanderers on the road. And wrapping up the next five fixtures, they take on Norwich. Again, midweek action, available on the old Sky Red button on the 3rd of October. Now, let's take a look at the Mighty Rovers. Now, I've gone for a bit of a weird formation here. Uh, Raya between the sticks, Williams, Mulgrew, and Lennon of Act 3. We did see this formation in the last chunk of the game against Aston Villa, but I, I don't know. I, I, I He probably won't do this, but this is what, what I would like to see. Give it a shot anyway. Uh, Bell, Evans, uh, Reed, and Nyembi, sort of a, a four 
four-man midfield with Dak into that creative slot, of course. Armstrong and Brereton up front. Again, this is probably not going to happen, um, but I think it, it could be interesting to explore. Probably not the game to explore. Maybe maybe we should explore in the older League Cup. But anyway, I just thought I'd throw something a little bit different out there. Uh, see see what it's like. Obviously, Reed came on as a cameo in the game against Aston Villa. I mean, he looked pretty feisty, obviously. I think he was at fault for that foul. But um, one way or another, Jack Grealish was, was going to have a crack at goal. And it probably would have went in, or at least troubled the keeper. Uh, who else is in this one? Brereton also gets the nod for me. I just want to see more of him. Um, he's got pace. If you call him, According to the old foothead.com, he's got an 86 pace. Uh, and Adam Armstrong, I know, I think he is lightning fast. He's got an 87 pace. So maybe if we can get Brereton running at full speed, he could be a, a decent uh, a decent forward. But I'm, I'm, I want to get in some game time because I want to see more of him and I want to see what he can do. Anyway, let's kick on forward and take a look at the statistics thus far for Rovers. Uh, Bradley Dack added, added to his tally this uh, past weekend against Villa to make it five goals for him this season. Charlie Morgan has three. Casey Palmer has three. And Big DG has two into the yellow cards. Corey Evans has uh, three yellow cards. Lanahan also has three. Bennett and Smallwood both have a yellow card. No red cards thus far for the season. Let's take a look at the next five. Uh, well, in fact, let's take a look at the results. That's five results for Rovers. Obviously, last time out, they took on Aston Villa and they drew 1-1 at Ewood Park. Before that, they got absolutely crushed against uh, Bristol City at their place at Thrashton Gate. 4-1 it was for Bristol City. Before that, we took on Lincoln City and we gave them a bit of a, a thrashing, but nothing to, do, to, to get too excited about. They are a league, uh, what is it, two, two teams, so... Uh, anyway, before that, we took on Brentford. Massive game for us. 1-0 win uh, at Ewood Park. Before that, we came back 2-0 down up against Reading at Ewood Park to get 2-2 and a share of the points. How about the next five results? Oh, oh gosh, my tongue's all over the place. Next five fixtures for Rovers. We do take on Derby County. We're talking about it right here, right now. Then we take on Stoke City. And now I've been billing this as a home game, but I think it's actually on the road. So Stoke City on the road. In fact, this is three away games on the bounce for Rovers. Stoke City next, 22nd of September. Uh, but after that, we take on Bournemouth on the 25th of September in the old League Cup. And then we bring it back to Ewood Park where we take on Nottingham Forest. Um... Uh, on Saturday, 29th of September. Then we'll wrap up the next five up against Sheffield United uh, in a game which I think is probably the sort of opposition we're kind of equal to. I'd say we're, we're, we're on par with Sheffield United at the moment. And probably, in fact, we're probably on par with Notts Forest at the moment. Uh, anyway, that's stuff to talk about a little bit later on. So let's take a look at the current top goal scorers around the whole league. And we've got Neil Mappe is back to scoring uh, once again after his suspension has been lifted. And he's up to seven goals thus far. Andres Wyman is in second spot with five. Benekit Afobi is in a, a list of a whole bunch of players who have got four goals uh, to the name. Matt Phillips is in there. Ollie Watkins, Josh McGuinness, Jay Rodriguez, to name but a few. Now, how about the key assist makers? Uh, Evandro is is the uh, top of the pops at the moment alongside Kieran Gibbs, Neil Mappe and Nick Powell and Ornel Hernandez with three assists to their name. Now, what does that all mean for the league table? As you can see, after the result against Aston Villa, this is the current state of play in the championship. Leeds still currently top the pops with 15 points. Brentford, Bristol uh, City and Middlesbrough are in sort of second, third, fourth respectively, all on 14th points, uh, 14 points. Sheffield United and Swansea make up the playoffs. Derby County are in seventh spot right here, right now. A uh, win for them. And they could technically go top. Uh, obviously, they'll need results to go their way. And they'll need probably a few goals. As for Rose, we are right smack dab in the middle of the table. 13th position for us. And a win for us. We could go as high as fifth. But again, a heck of a lot of results need to go our way if that's to happen. Um, as for the bottom end of the table, Reading, Preston and Ipswich currently occupy the relegation hotspots. So, a bit of trouble for Preston at the moment. So, I don't know when we'll take on them. I, I, I'd rather hope it's pretty soon because I'd like to get them in a bit of bad form uh, because you, you know what it is, uh, local derbies and all that. We need to we need to get one over of these punks as well as Bolton, as well as Wigan. So, you've heard a bit what I've had to say about the match. Now, what you really want to hear is what the opposition fans have got to say about this match. And I'm joined by Chris Parsons from the Steve Bloomer's Washing Podcast. And he's here live via Skype to talk about a little bit about the old build-up to the game against Blackburn Rovers, uh, Derby County this uh, midweek. So first and foremost, for my small corner of the YouTube world, could you tell them a little bit about yourself? Uh, so yeah, I host a, a Derby County podcast called Steve Bloomer's Washing. Uh, it's been going for just over a season. We started at the start of last season. Um, it's myself and two other Lifelong Derby County fans, we get together every fortnight to run the rule over 
Derby County's most recent matches. We've interviewed the odd player here and there, um, been up to the training ground in pre-season, that sort of thing. We go to uh, as many games as we can up, up at Pride Park in the season, home and away. And um, yeah, it's just our chance to let other fans have their say, really. I'm sure it's the same for you. Try and get other fans involved. It's a chance for us to, you know, vent our vent good and bad about the, you know, the, the good, the bad and the ugly of watching Derby County year upon year. And uh, yeah, we're very much enjoying it so far. OK, well, you might have touched a little bit on my first question for you. So the new season is well underway and Derby County have started off pretty well. They are, I think, around right in the playoffs at the moment. Um, but they come into this match fresh off the back of a defeat against Rotherham, with, which saw both Tom Lawrence and manager Frank Lampard sent off. So what's your initial reaction from that match that's recently fresh in your memory? It, was, it wasn't It was pretty. Um, I mean, Frank Lampard's very much learning on the job in, uh, you know, in what is his first managerial job um, at Derby. Yeah, it wasn't pretty. It was a scrappy game. It was pretty tight, really. Pretty nip and tuck. Rotherham are pretty strong at home. They were very, uh, very stubborn, very direct, uh, very physical. And what changed the game was Tom Lawrence's uh, sending off. I, I know Blackburn fans will be a bit familiar with him, having played there as well. Um, dived in with a... A pretty stupid challenge, really, which did change the game. So Derby, that sent Derby down to 10. They then conceded a, a penalty soon after that, um, which I haven't seen back yet, but I, I think it was one of those that was a bit touch and go. And then Derby sort of lost their heads, really. Uh, Lampard got sent off himself for uh, for marching down the technical area and berating one of the officials. Um, I think that's sort of the player in him coming out, really. You know, he's... Uh, one of my friends I went with said that he still thinks he's one of the lads. You know, he was he was up there sort of giving the officials all this and giving him an earful. And um, you can't do that as a manager and not expect to face consequences. So, yeah, a difficult day. But, you know, as I said, um, we've had a strong start overall. Um, four wins out of seven. We're just outside the playoffs. Oh, just and I think we're pretty well placed to compete at the right end of the division towards the end of the season. OK, now it's like you're reading my mind because I my next question is, what is your overall expectations for Derby County? Are you thinking about automatic play, uh, pr promotion through the playoffs or just jet life for us? Uh, we're uh, thinking more on the lines of survival for Blackburn Rose. So what's your overall ambitions for Derby this season? Well, it's been so up and down the past five years. I mean, uh, since um, Derby have been... The uh, you know always the bridesmaid never the bride over the past five years uh, two appearances three appearances in the playoffs in the past five seasons uh, that final in 2014 of course and then semi final defeats last season and three years ago uh, under various managers um, when Gary Rowett left to take the Stoke job a lot of Derby fans thought this season would be about consolidation building from scratch again and our chairman did say that there wouldn't be that much money to spend. But fast forward a few weeks and we'd spent a fair bit of money on a number of players, got one of the biggest squads in the division now. So the expectation completely changed over the summer. Uh, we're not talking top two still. I think that's going to be a bit beyond us. But there's no reason with, you know, there's no reason why with the squad we have already and the players we've added, why we shouldn't be top six material. So I think somewhere between fourth and eighth, is uh, I think is a realistic expectation, even in Lampard's first job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, you're one of the ones that we're kind of worried about over the next month. We've got quite a few difficult schedule up ahead. So anyway, let's, let's fast forward to Tuesday night. Derby County will be taking on Blackburn at Pride Park. What concerns you the most about Blackburn Rovers? Well, it's a problem we've faced a couple of times this season where Derby have struggled slightly against teams that are quite direct, that... I don't want to say long ball teams, but, um, you know, teams that sort of load the box, look for physical attacking players, look for knockdowns, look for runners off the main striker. Rotherham did it. Uh, Millwall did it to us as well, where we lost there earlier in the season. Um, we coped relatively well against Rotherham, but I think from what I've, from what I've heard, a friend of mine went to the Villa game, uh, just gone against, uh, against Rovers, and he said that, you know, you guys do look to sort of hit Danny Graham and then have uh, like Bradley Dack and, um, and and Armstrong playing off him. So uh, that is my concern. You know, physical strikers against, we do have quite lightweight young defenders in the team at the moment. Richard Keogh is vastly experienced, just had his 300th game for Derby. But alongside him is um, uh, for Keogh Tamori, who's a 19-year-old defender on loan from Chelsea. And then our right back is 18-year-old uh, Jaden Bogle, one of our, you know, our, clearly our youngest player. So, inexperience 
is a concern. Um, you know, playing physical teams is a concern. But Lampard's learning fast that you have to win games ugly in this division. Um, it's rough and tumble. It's relentless. And uh, hopefully we can, we'll can we have enough for you on the, at Pride Park on Tuesday. OK, awesome. So on the flip side now, so who should we be keeping an eye out for on the Derby County team? Who's the man that's going to be creating us havoc? We've had uh, we've, we've spread the goals around uh, relatively well so far this season, but the standout talent attacking-wise is Mason Mount, the uh, on-loan attacking midfielder from Chelsea. Uh, we fought off a lot of competition to get him in the summer. Uh, he didn't score yesterday, but he's already scored, I think it's four in four in eight. Um, he made his debut for England under-21s last week, uh, where he scored one and made one on his debut. So there's really big things expected of him. And he's extremely tidy on the ball. Uh, he can go both ways. Um, he's quite slight. There's not much on him. Um, so I wonder if opposing teams will start to target him a bit, you know, um, maybe like double up on him, give him a bit of the rough treatment, see how he reacts to that. But he is clearly, he's got a huge amount of ability, good with both feet, makes those great late runs, where, which he's learning off his, off his mentor and our manager, Frank Lampard, that he did so well in his playing career. Uh, so he's a big danger. And then elsewhere, David Nugent was resting against Rotherham. Um, he's got he's at the other end of the scale. He's got a huge amount of experience, played hundreds of football league games um, over a you know, 15, 20 year career. So he's got a lot of experience. And then up front, the likes of Martin Waghorn, signed from Ipswich in the summer, has a bit of a point to prove. I mean, he only scored a couple and not played as much as he would have liked. And uh, Jack Marriott. Oh, yeah. as well, uh, the, who was the lead scorer in League One last season. I'm sure yeah, Rovers yeah. fans know a lot about him. Yeah. Um, so he start, he came on against uh, against Rotherham at the weekend. He's lacking a bit of match fitness, but he'll be desperate to prove himself, get minutes and get in the goals. All right. OK, now let's say you, I, I can give you a magical wand and you could cast and you pick somebody from the Rovers team, current Rovers squad, and bring him into the Derby County team. Who would you take? Um, we, you look at those players that were influential in, in getting Rovers up from League One into the Championship, and I think, uh, from what I gather about Blackburn, I can't, I can't claim to know the whole team, but I, you know, I think Bradley Dack could get into most Championship teams, I'd say. I think he looked lively against Villa yesterday, um, from what I've seen from, from that game. Um, he seems quite a menace. He's got a, he's got a decent scoring record. He seems to be the guy that, that Blackburn looked to to you know to, to pick up points in a lot of games i probably have to say him okay well he's not for grabs i'm not i'm not giving him to you <laughs> okay <laughs> but uh, let's say we can hop in the into the delorean or tardis or whatever and go back in time and pick a player that's played for both blackburn rovers and derby county and you could bring them in the in their prime to the current derby county team who would you take well, well i was thinking about this earlier and i mean there's there's been certainly some good and bad who have played for blackburn and derby over the years i mean if you mention the name leon best Oof. The Derby fans, it sends a sends a show down Derby Cover fans' lights. Uh, he was, I mean, he was rubbish for us, and then he went to Rotherham and scored against us. So he was, uh, he was bad. I mean, even Danny Graham, who I know scored a lot of goals for Blackburn, again, very ineffective for Derby. Was really wasn't very good at all. Um, but the other end of the scale, uh, Lee Carsley, really helped establish Derby in the Premier League in in the back end of the nineteen nineties. Uh, he was a, a local lad, well from the Midlands at least. And he really helped establish them as a mid-table team under Jim Smith between sort of 1996 and 1998-99. So if it wasn't him, the only other player I'd have to say would be uh, Christian Daly, the uh, Scottish midfielder slash centre-back who Jim Smith brought in, I think in the summer of 96, when, when we got promoted. Um, started as a midfielder, came down from Scotland from Dundee. Um, but was converted into a into a makeshift centre back later on, and I think we ended up sending him to Blackburn for something I, about five million gonna, pounds or something like that. I was just going to check. I was like, did we not buy him from Dart? I think we did. Yeah, yeah, we did. I think. I think we did um, yeah, I, th I think we. I mean, it doesn't sound like much now, but at the time, I think we did pretty well out of that deal. Um, but that's not to say that he wasn't really good for Derby. I mean, I I was you know I always thought he did a good job for us, like quite versatile, strong, um, had a goal in him as well from set pieces, and he got forward from time to time. So. Of the uh, of the mixed bag, I think it's fair to say of Derby and Rovers players, I'd have to say Christian Daly is probably the best bet. Yeah, well, he was he was all right for Rovers. I don't think I think you guys must have had the best out of him. We it, not we didn't get the worst out of him, but yeah, we it, I think he definitely took a a bit of a, a bit of a dip in form after that. Anyway, let's cut straight to the chase. The money question here: What's the final score going to be Tuesday night, Derby County against Rovers? 
I think Derby are pretty strong at home and don't you know they'll certainly have a point to prove after the Rotherham game where several of the team lost their heads, as I said, and we should have we should have got something from that game, but we didn't really create any chances. So Lampard want to see a reaction, um, and we had picked up a decent amount of points to start the season pretty well. So I'm going to be optimistic and say Derby to win by a single goal. I'll say I think we'll concede. So I'll say um, I'll say two one Derby. Yes, that pretty much wraps up the interview for now. But uh, Chris, would it be possible if you could send me maybe a post match review about the game shortly after the kickoff for our review show? Well, I'll see how I'm feeling and what the result is. But uh, yeah, sure, that shouldn't be a problem. Awesome, awesome. But until then, I want more about the Steve Bloomer's Washing Podcast. Link to that bad boy will be in the description below. But uh, until we see you again, Chris, I'll let you get out of here. Cheers, Dirk. Thank you. Now, over the years, a number of players have played for both Blackburn Rovers and Derby County. Here are just three of them. Uh, kicking it off is this fella, DJ Campbell. That's right, he did represent both Derby County and Blackburn Rovers. Not uh, much effect for Blackburn Rovers. I, don't, I can't really quote for his time at Derby County, but yeah, I think he actually played a whole bunch of clubs. He's popped up all over the place uh, quite recently, and when I've done my research on these play for boths, he's been all over the place. Anyway, DJ Campbell is number one. Uh, as for number two, how about this guy? Lars Bohina, not not Henningberg, the guy on the right-hand side. Lars Bohina, that's right, he did represent both Derby County and Blackburn Rovers. Here he is in the Isle of Derby County shirt, and in the background you see big old Paul Merson in a villa shirt. How mad is that? Uh, and uh, yeah, obviously uh, he was part of the old setup. Um, I don't. Was he part of the old winning? I don't think he was there uh, when we won the league. He was. He was there the season after, if, I, if I'm right. Ninety five, ninety six in Shearer's last season. I think that's that's the uh, that's when he arrived. Kick it on forward. How about this guy? Oh my goodness, what a quality left back this fellow was. Bit of a journeyman as well. Been around and about uh, towards the back end of his career. And we're talking about Stephen Warnock. That's right. And I think he probably had his best days at, uh, in a blue and white shirt. If I'm honest. Um. The old Mark Hughes era, but yep, he did also represent Derby County. Like I said, those are just three of the players that have played for both Blackburn Rovers and Derby County. If you want to check out a full list, there's a link to my uh, WordPress site in the old description, and I'll bring it all up, and you can go tell your buddies and be have the old bragging rights about who's played for both Blackburn Rovers and Derby County. Check it out. Now you will know what I've got to say about the match. What you really want to hear is what Cass the Cat has predicted for this match. Here she is with a prediction against Derby County and Blackburn Rovers. Let's take a look. wrap up this puppy i want to let you know that cast the cat has a very own app yes that's right it's available only on android at the moment we are trying to talk about trying to trying to get it available on ios but i don't think it's going to happen um but yeah if you want to check out the app it's 100 free i'm not making a one cent or one penny from this app link to it in the description below um check it out no ads no nothing it's 100 free What's, what's the what's the harm in trying? Give it a shot. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a good old thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, smash your subscribe button. Hit your bang out today with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, world football related. We've got it all here under one roof. Uh, also, make sure to check out the old description. Links to my other social media platforms are in there. Twitter, Facebook, all that kind of good stuff. Also, if you want another resource for anything Rovers related, why don't you check out the old roverschat.com website. Link to that bad boy in the old description below. And also, I've got another one for you. If you want to chat to fellow Rovers fans just like this guy, head over to the brfcs.com forum. You can chat with me about the Derby County game. You can chat to me about Bradley Dax's amazing silky skills. All that kind of good stuff available at the old forum. Check that bad boy out again. Link to those puppies in there for your leisure. Yes, so big game this one. Well, they're, they're all big ones for us right now. We, I'd, love, I'd love a win. 
against Derby County. I don't know what our chances are up against Stoke City on the weekend. I think that's going to be a bridge too far. Um, but, you know, Derby County, bad result for them on the weekend. Losing uh, Tom Lawrence, who is, a, I think he's a, a critical part of their setup there. And also the repercussions of, of Lampard. Will he be suspended? Uh, will he be on the touchline? Will that hinder them at all? I don't know. You know, usually I, I don't really get that sending managers off and they're, they're like another 10 feet back. And they can still do all their stuff anyway. So I don't know. I don't know the deal about that. Um, but yeah, if we can pick up a victory here, then we're going to be right back in the thick of things and we're, we'll be in a good spot to kick on for the rest of this season uh, or the rest of this calendar year anyway. Obviously, I think once uh, we get over this little hump of fixtures when we take on Derby, we take on um, Stoke, we take on Forest. Um, those, these kind of the next three, obviously the Villa one was one of them. Um, and if we come, come out with it with a good share of the points and, and not many defeats, then I think we could could be in for a good old season. And I heard, I heard on the commentary, the commentary yesterday um, against Villa that I, they, they were, you know, one of the commentators quoted Mowbray saying that if they're in the thick of things, if they're in the mix come January, they're likely to invest further in the club. Um, uh, to kick on and try and, you know, maybe, maybe, just maybe squeeze into the playoffs. I'm not saying that that's going to happen. Uh, I'm just trying to, you know, relay some of the info that was quoted in the old uh, Sky coverage uh, yesterday. But anyway, that's enough jibber-jabber. Let me hear your thoughts and opinions about this game of the build-up and all that kind of good stuff in the old comment section below. And I'll have a good old chat about it. But until I speak to you again, which will be in Rovers, guys, anyway, uh, the instant review shortly after the final result on Tuesday. We'll talk about, uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Thumbs up, subscribe! Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope. <laughs>